for devotion for us today comes from, again, hope we shall receive power. And today focuses on David. The scripture that is said before us is taken from 2 Samuel 23, verses 1 and 2. And it reads like this. Now, these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, said, the man who was raised up on him, the anointed of the God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. Father, as we listen to this short devotion, open our eyes, open our understanding, and let the light of your truth shine in shaping us to be more like Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, Sister White says, who can measure the results of those years of pride and wandering among the lower years? For communion with nature and with God, the care of his flocks, the perils and deliverances, the griefs and joys of his lowly lot, but not only to mold the character of David and to influence his future life, but through the psalms of Israel's sweet singer, they were in all coming ages to kindle love and faith in the hearts of God's people, bringing them nearer to the ever-loving heart of him in whom all his creatures live. She goes on to say, David, in the beauty and vigor of his young manhood, was preparing to take a high position with the noblest of the earth. His talents, as precious gifts from God, were employed to explore the glory of the divine hero. His opportunities of contemplation and meditation served to enrich with served to enrich him with that wisdom and piety that made him beloved of God and of angels. As he contemplated the perfections of his creator, clearer conceptions of God opened before his soul. Obscure themes were illuminated, difficulties were made plain, perplexities were harmonized, and each ray of new light called forth fresh bursts of rapture and sweet the anthems of devotion to the glory of God and the Redeemer. The love that moved him, the soul that beset him, the triumphs that attended him were all themes of his active thought. And as he beheld the love of God in all the providences of his life, his heart aflow with more fervent adoration and gratitude. His voice rang out in a rich melody. His harp was swept with more exultant joy. And the shepherd boy proceeded from strength to strength, from knowledge to knowledge, from the, for the spirit of the Lord was upon him. This is the devotional thought this morning taken from you shall receive power. I just want you to focus again on the first paragraph where he says, who can measure the results of those years of toil and wandering among the lonely hills? I want you to know this morning, don't give it, that God gives us no wasted season. No wasted season. There he was, lonely, among the hills, tending his sheep, and later on in his years, running for his life from Saul. But did he squander the opportunity? Did he complain? Did he wring his hand and say, God, how could you have put me in such a predicament? How could you have abandoned me, left me out of myself? No, nah, that's not what he did. So what he said instead, he turned his mind to things that are eternal. What did he do? She said, the communion with nature and with God, 
the care of his flocks, the perils and deliverances, the griefs and joys of his lone brother, were not only to mold the character of David and to influence his future, but through the Psalms of Israel's sweet singer, they were in all coming ages the kindle of and faith in the hearts of God's people. So in your trial right now, in the difficulties right now, COVID, laying off unemployment, uh, maybe sickness, whatever it is, seeing it God's hand of challenge, working to shape your character, working to build you up to conform. Remember what the scripture says, we rejoice in our sufferings. Why? Because we know it that suffering work in patience and patience endures and endurance character and character produces hope. What the dreams tell us to do when we find ourselves in challenges, count it all joy when you encounter various trials, knowing that the child of our faith work in endurance and we must let endurance have its perfect work. God is not wasting this season in your life. I don't know what it is that you might be facing, but know that God is not worried this in the season. And again, Romans reminds us that in all things, God works together for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. What we must do in this season of challenge, this season of testing, is to get what to be right. What is the right attitude? Focus upon God. Fling ourselves upon God. Contemplate his goodness. Contemplate his providence. Like the psalmist, we will come out refined as gold. Remember, that's the purpose. That's why he put us in the furnace of affliction. Not to destroy us, but to refine us so that we come out of gold. So let us like the Psalms, David use these moments of affliction to develop Christ like character in ourselves. And then we must go on further. When we find ourselves in the valleys wandering, let us use our test to leave an eternal testimony for those who come behind us. Look at what David did. And hundreds and hundreds of Psalms that you and I sing today. You and I use them to cheer our soul, to comfort our loved ones. We read them at church. They are there as an eternal testimony from David of the goodness of God. Are you using the test today in your life to turn it into a testimony for those who are to come? We've been studying in a whole series that the Christian life is essentially the life that is lived for others. Here is one way in which we can ensure that our lives matter and that we live for others. By using the test that God allows to come into our life, to turn them into eternal testimonies of God's faithfulness, God's providence, God's leading, so that those who come behind us can look back and say, thank God, the testimony, sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so, Indeed, he did not waste his time in the valley. He did not let all that time during COVID go by for nothing. He did not let the time of his unemployment go for nothing. He did not let the time of his sickness in bed go for nothing. Rather, he's left an eternal testimony of the goodness of God. That testimony is cheering my soul today. So brothers and sisters, let us be encouraged. God will never leave us nor forsake us. Remember, when we go through the fires, they shall not burn us. When we go through the water, they shall not overflow us. Because he is with us. And he's working to change our challenges or to use our challenges to conform our characters to him. And he's working in our lives to turn our test into testimonies for his goodness. So hold up your head, rejoice, it won't be long. Soon and very soon, Jesus is coming. And we're going to all go home with him and hear those blessed words. Well done, well good and faithful servant. So be strong in the Lord. Use this short devotion this morning 
for your glory and for your honor. He calls faith and hope and love and peace and goodness and kindness and mercy and multiplying to our lives, even in these seasons, these trying seasons of our life. I pray for that person right now who thinks that they are at the end of the road. Oh, Father, turn their minds around because of this devotion this morning. Help them to see that you're just conforming their characters into the image of Christ. And you're giving them a testimony to be a help and a witness to someone who is to come after. Thank you again, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.